What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead, do me a favor, and hit that subscribe button, and I appreciate your support. All right, so in today's video, I wanted to take a look at a really cool feature. It's actually something that I just discovered uh, this week, even though I'm 99% sure it's been there for a long time. Somehow I missed it. And that function is called fill gaps. So first of all, in order to find that, we will go to keyboard shortcuts and we will go to fill and you can see fill gaps. Now, this is not to be confused with remove gaps. Remove gaps does something completely different and it's not the same function at all. So fill gaps, go ahead and map that out to a key command and I'm gonna show you how and why that's useful. So in order to demonstrate this, I'm actually using one of the songs that comes in Studio One. This is Truth Seeker. Uh, it's an amazing track, really, really cool. Great job uh, for the people who did this. And it's available in demos and tutorials on your start page. Let's have a quick listen to these drums. And against the click. So here's an interesting story. I was at Summer NAM recently and I was talking to a bunch of guys and they were talking about drum editing in general. And one person was saying that in Nashville, a pretty big thing is they like to just cut in the downbeats of every single bar and they'll quantize those to the beginning and then they'll do any manual editing that way. So they're not necessarily quantizing to 16th notes on every kick and snare hit, but just kind of saying, I want to hit the downbeats. So let's take that same approach. So what we would do here is I have these drums grouped and now I can use my tab key and I can move to the different transients. So the whole concept here with that type of editing is that you would move to a transient, you would cut it, and then if we head to the quantize here and we choose quantize on track, which is quantizing the actual event start and nothing to do with time compression or expansion, then we will click apply, right? So now let's do the same thing again. I would go to the next downbeat, which in this case is right over here. So this is a little bit off. And then again, I would split and then I would quantize on track. Now, you guys know how I don't like to waste time or waste any steps. So I've essentially created a macro that does something very, very similar. So all I have to do now is quantize or rather tab to the transient that I want and I can fire off my macro and that's gonna do that for me. So again, I'm gonna tab to hit my transient that I want and I'll quantize. So I'm just gonna do the downbeats. And this is just for sake of demonstration. So before everybody starts grilling me and saying, why would you do that? You're ruining a perfect performance. That's not really the point of this. The point of this is to talk about a feature. All right, so now you see what happens here is we have these gaps. So if I was to play this, although at every downbeat is perfectly quantized, if we listen, I'll take my click off, We have these little gaps and that's what this feature is all about. So the idea is that if I highlight two adjacent audio events and there's a gap between them, we fire off the fill gaps command and it backfills. So the way it does it is it will always take the event start and backfill it. And this is very similar to the way the new behavior uh, in Studio One drum slicing works. But another thing I noticed kind of as a happy accident, I guess, is not only does it fill a gap if there is a gap, but it also removes overlaps if you have any overlap. So if we take this into account, we take a look at these two areas over here. Let me zoom in. All we have to do is essentially select two audio events that are adjacent. We can select multiple audio events and essentially we can fill all these gaps. So if you've done any quantizing manually, uh, and, and this could be honestly just grabbing this event and dragging it visually in place, this is really, really useful. So now if we go edit and we go to, where is it, select, and we go to select all on tracks, which means we're selecting everything, you can see that we have these different areas. This one has an overlap. This one has an actual gap. If I fire this off, now you can see that it's filled the gaps and it's filled the overlaps. Now the only thing left to do here is obviously I would wanna crossfade these. So again, I'm gonna do a select all on tracks and I'm actually gonna, do something slightly different here. I'm gonna just pull this back a little bit to just give myself a little bit of a buffer. And because I had everything selected, it has done that same move for all of my edits. Let me scroll down and find one over here. You'll see that. Now I'm gonna do the same thing again. I'm gonna fire off the fill gaps command and it's backfilled everything. Now at this point, I'm just gonna click X and now I've created some crossfades here for all of my manual edits. So if I go back to the beginning 
and let's go to the next edit boundary. You can see that I've created crossfades here. And it's just a really, really useful feature if you're into manual editing. And this is a really great example when you're editing drums. So now I've just edited only the downbeats. And then of course you can go in and further refine your edits. And if I was really doing this for real, I would actually pull this back and make sure that the original hit from this performance is the one that I'm using. But Fill gaps, really, really useful tool if you need to remove gaps or remove overlaps. And essentially, you can do the same thing. It's extremely useful for manual editing, whether you're working with transient material like congas, percussion, uh, it could be a shaker, really could be anything. But whenever you're doing stuff where you're sliding things along and you're moving them on the timeline and, and, and you inevitably end up with gaps or overlaps, just search for that key command, fill gaps, not to be confused with remove gaps. That will do a shuffle delete it's completely different this is a really really useful feature i'm super glad i found it and i just thought i'd share that with you anyways that's all the time i have available for today i hope you enjoyed this video if you did please consider hitting that subscribe button any questions or comments leave them down below i will do my absolute best to get back to you and as always we will catch you in the next video cheers